Ginger with Kelly Higgins Divine this afternoon. It's 26 to 3 and here from littlemissorganised.com.au, Bonnie Black. Hello. Hi, Kelly. Now, getting organised when it comes to sheds, the old man cave. <laughs> How's it looking, fellas? Does everything have a place? If that doesn't sound like yours, Bonnie... What, how can we help? <laughs> so if the garage is the place where things go to die, I guess we can call the shed the graveyard because honestly, mm. a lot of things that go in that shed just do not come out and sometimes it can be like this massive pile of doom. And for me in particular, when anyone says shed or garden shed or man mm. cave, I just think creepy crawlies because honestly they're not a place that a lot of people proactively keep away those kind of things. This is true, but do men want a neat, tidy space. I mean, I'm sure some do, but mostly, isn't it just, is it, don't they just want the mess? That's what they like. I think what men like is the control. That's what we've seen in our clients and in their husbands anyway, mm. is that they just want the freedom to be able to have their shed the way that they want it. And if that means that it's messy, that's their own consequence. They've got to suffer and they mm. realise that. So even men get to a point, generally speaking, where they want to do a clean up and get it organised and then, you know, slowly it kind of trickles its way back again. <laughs> clean up. <laughs> Fair enough. But what are some easy ways then to start cleaning up a shed or a garage? So a really good way to do it is just to lay everything out on mm -hmm. the floor, get a tarp, you know, the whole life on the lawn kind of thing and then just sort it out into your categories. Oh, I've got five hammers. I don't need five hammers. Maybe mm. I need one. Maybe I need two. And donate those other three to a local men's shed community centre or something like that where they can mm. go and get used again by somebody else. Because realistically, when it comes to tools, how often are we using them? I mean, our culture has changed so so much that we're, yep. we're not farming as much as you know our ancestors did. So we don't need as many of these tools as often. So we really need to kind of cut down the amount of stuff that we're keeping for those purposes. I often wonder how many tools blokes have in their shed. It'd be interesting they, to know. Yeah, that they actually know what that thing does. Yeah. <laughs> they got it. It yeah. looks great. Yeah. It's a sander. I know what it does, but yeah. Yeah, I really don't know how to use it. That kind yeah. of thing. Now, what are the rules about shed storage? Mm, yes, yeah, so sheds are another place where a lot of people tend to just use whatever containers are available, and that tends to be cardboard boxes. Mm. And cardboard boxes boxes aren't great because they do tend to hide creepy crawlies, especially yep. the huntsmen's. Um, and they disintegrate really easy and, and they actually attract rats and things like that as well. So I'm all about clear, stackable containers with lids to yeah. try and keep things clean and dust free. All right. And once again, just working out what goes where. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So if if you've got a shed, how how big is it? What sort of stuff do you actually need to store? You have to go through all those questions of, do I need this? Have I used this in the last 12 months? Am I going to use it in the next 12 months? Mm -hmm. And then just sort things by category. So, for example, if you've got all the long-handled tools like your garden rakes and things like that and your shovels, mm -hmm. you need to put them in one spot all together. And there's some really great ideas on Pinterest of different ways to actually store them. You know, you can get like a really big old umbrella stand to stick those kind of things in. You can hang mm, them on idea. hooks along a wall. You can get old PVC pipes and do one down the bottom one a little bit higher up to keep them standing upright along a wall. So there's yep. lots of great ideas out there to help you organise your shed. It's just about spending that time and actually investing into, you know, laying the foundation. Now, there's been the rise of women's sheds mm. as well, where mm. it's not so much about uh, gardening tools, but uh, mechanical tools, I'm sure it could be too, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a place for women to write, create, contemplate. Yeah. Slash escape, just like men do. Yeah, I think um, there's been a bit of a rise in uh, women's sheds in the last few years. Mm. Particularly, there was a book written in 2014 that really talked about the need for women's sheds. Yeah. And it just showed that women were getting tired of feeling like, yeah, the, re the house is my domain, but really mm. I don't have a place just for me. And there's the man cave or the man shed, but where is that place that women can go and mm. just potter and, and do things undisturbed? And so now there's this big um, surgence of these women's sheds that are coming up and they're so different to men's sheds. I mean, you think of men's sheds as being dirty, disorganised and full of spiders. Yep. The women's sheds are full of lace and white and, you know, fluffy pillows. So it's just a real contrast. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, and hopefully no spiders. <laughs> hopefully no spiders. <laughs> what, what's the perfect size for a shed? That's a good question. Um, I think probably depending on what your situation is. So if you've got like a ride-on lawnmower, mm. you obviously need a much bigger shed. But for most of us who are on six or seven or 800 metre square blocks and yeah. suburbia, all we really need is a small maybe, you know, three by one or two by three or something like that, just so that we can stick the lawnmower, the whippersnipper, the blower um, and those gardening tools in there. Because most of our other tools, mm. men generally like to try and stick in the garage because it's a bit more accessible. It's a you know, there's insulation, there's all that kind of thing. So sheds, garden sheds really tend to be the place where you just walk in, you grab something and you go out, whereas a garage tends to be a place more that we might, you know, stand mm. and potter. Unless you're living on an acreage, of course, and you've got a three-bay Titan that just, you know, is everybody's delight. Yeah. And, and I suppose nowadays too, there are more storage options than there have ever been in the history of the planet. Yeah. Uh, especially for tools. You only have to go into one of the hardware stores or, mm. or those kind of places. And, you know, there are racks and racks of ways to store everything you that a bloke might have in his shed. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of inspiration that can be found at all those hardware type stores mm. for blokes and the different tools and what their functions are as well. So it can really be a man's wonderland. It just has to be, you know, a little bit organised so that he can actually find things rather than needing mm. a tool, not being able to find it and then having to go out and replace it because yeah. he couldn't find the first one. Um the my grandfather's uh, shed used to have the um, you know the jars that the lids screwed oh, on yes, and they, yes. they hung from the board. Yes, cool. I was mightily idea. impressed with those when I was a kid. It is pretty awesome. I yeah. have to admit, I only saw that one a few years ago and thought, oh, what a great idea. Mm. And nowadays, yeah. there's heaps of storage ideas where they're actually going upwards instead of outwards. So they're yep. using that high space above um, above you in a garage or in a shed where you can mm. actually slot boxes in and there's racks now that you can get to hang your bikes and all your big sporting equipment up instead of just, you know, down or, oh, or yeah. on a wall and stuff. So, yeah. It's... And you've got to be careful, don't you now? I mean, it's so expensive, some of that yeah. stuff. The last thing you want is mould or... Yes. You know, they're the things to look out for mm. too. Yes, absolutely. So it's, mm. it's all about buying quality first of all but making sure it's stored properly and taken care of because yep. you don't want to be spending lots of time having to maintain things and then lots of money having to replace them because you've lost them or because you didn't buy a quality item in the first place. That's it. And invest in covers. Mm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. And, you know, a shed that doesn't leak. Mm. Fix it. That's what you've got the tools for. That's exactly right. And There's a hole in the bucket deal line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please do sing. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not what anyone wants. <laughs> All right, look, some great advice in there. And look, now's the time, isn't it, to mm. get in there when it's not so hot and the shed doesn't, exactly. you know, isn't humid as. Yep, yep. And get it done. So. Yes, because the lawns do need a clip now. Our lawn, I am ashamed to say, had a two-month break from being mowed, but it just didn't grow that much. So it was mm. great. You know, the husband loved it, the yeah. reprieve. But now's the time to embrace spring is coming, do a clean out, get everything, all your shears sharpened and ready to That's go. Because the first good rain any of us get mm. around this state mm. Kaboom. Kaboom indeed. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Bonnie Black, thank you. Thanks, Kelly. And you can check out Bonnie Black's work on many different other areas of your home and your life at littlemissorganised.com.au.